Hey guys, this is John here in Los Angeles with the Alpha Chain Update for Tuesday, October 15th, 2024. Starting off with Hakur Halderson's Yggdrasil deck. Pretty heavy duty tarot, Norse tarot divination deck. It's not a tarot deck. They don't have four suits. They don't have uh, a major arcana. But this is Muspel, Muspel, the Lord of Misfits. <clears throat> he, we are the Fiend Club. The Lord of Misfits. I wonder hey, if Hakur Halderson knows the band. And today uh, we're continuing with Conan, Conan 256, 246. <clears throat> Conan, Red Sonya, and Zula fight a new monster. Sorry, I thought one of the uh, boards was sliding. And this is a sort of, uh, this is Roy Thomas and Gary Hartle still. And this is a... Uh, more of the sword and feudal sort of historical fiction type story. There's only a little bit of sorcery in this one. Only a little bit of, uh, this one's really, it, this one's kind of, this one bites off more than it can chew. There's a lot going on. It's not really rewarding. It's almost an entirely encapsulated single issue. Varney the Vampire isn't in it. Um, in this one, I forgot to point out how they got rid of him. Zula read a script from some lost magic scroll and it electrocuted him and he was suddenly gone. Um, so they did end it. They didn't. Busema would have had the nine panels page where they showed him at least, you know, I don't know, something happened to him, like disappear in a cloud of smoke. They didn't even do that. Um, and this one has some of the same sort of issues where there's a lot going on. Um, <clears throat> Sonia is sort of beside herself this entire issue. There's that word verklempt, but I can write that word. I can't really use it in a sentence. And she's kind of pissed off. She's moody. She's, she's moody this entire issue. And also Conan, you see this weird white highlight on his face? This shows up a couple more times in the issue, and it is to not good effect. It's overly high lit, and it's not to a good effect. And uh, whereas like the Tomb Raider stuff we saw with Andy Park, all those characters had a golden reflector shining on their faces. People were just learning how to do gradients and whatnot in like Corel Draw or, you know, whatever the paint programs they were using back then. And, uh... <clears throat> Might have been Photoshop, 2000. Anyhow, here we have, so, M. Alric. M. Alric is riding into a new city-state that is under attack from the Koharians. And the Koharians are the local natives who are being displaced by rich foreigners from outside, coming in with big armies, moving into their city-states, buying up the land and taking over. And so here, the the military procession is attacked by arrows from the shadows. The Koharians are the natives. Amalric is a mercenary army with Conan, Red Sonja, and Zula. And they are responding to this king's request. We're going to show him in a minute. After Amalric almost gets shot, Conan, Sonja, and Zula go out chasing the, uh, the natives. Sonja catches a boy and almost kills him, but lets him go. And he tells her to meet him at the, in the catacombs of the next full moon, which is actually three weeks away. It's not tonight. Um, <clears throat> and then we have a couple other guys who jump her that she kills. And this is relatively important in that when she gets back, she tells Conan, you did, Conan asks her, Conan is now captain of the guard. And he asks her, you didn't, you didn't capture anyone alive? She's like, no, I only killed these two guys. She doesn't tell him about the boy that she let escape. She's very conflicted throughout this entire issue. She's not talking to Conan. It's, it's apparent, but this is a comic book. And so little things like personality and uh, body language and expression can get lost. And they could have gotten lost in this one, except the writing is so overstated. And you're going to see what happens. So here's the king, the guy in the blue helmet, 
the white hair, the white beard. And Amalric is the guy in green with the black beard. And let me hold that up for a minute longer so you can note them down here on the bottom. There's a lot of moving parts in this one. This is an indulgent comic. This is indulgent in the historical fiction of Co that Conan offers. My favorite is Savage Sword 157, and we'll get into that one. I'm going to color that at some point. I've decided as I've been coloring angels, I was coloring for a little bit today. So here we have more moving through the capital, being introduced to the locals, hearing the backstory on why there is a fight with the Koharians, hearing the backstory on who this Gallic commander is, a uh, Hyperborean, Aquilonian sort of commander in this city, this sand city, more like Spain, Barcelona, maybe Italy. Here we have a page of flashback. And again, this is all historical fiction type story line. Uh, here we have Red Sonia explaining her experiences with the Koharian archers and how she knows how they'll fight. And this is really exposition and backstory. It's page filler. This is, uh, this is an indulgent comic. None of this really moves the... It doesn't advance the plot. It fills in the plot. It fills in pages. None of the characters, we don't become any more attached to them. They don't show off their personal courage. They don't advance. And because they're telling stories, and they're not even telling stories of their own bravery, they're just, they're just filling in the story. Um, they're advancing some training. They do some training. It's a little bit of the Seven Samurai. They train the city-state to face this group. And here... Red Sonia and Zula sneak off three weeks later at the next full moon to the catacombs to meet that little boy and the rest of the, who really resemble the Fenrisian, whatever their names were in Dune, uh, that the little twink boy was off working with. Um, <clears throat> and so here we have them meeting them and a, a bit of drama starts up. There's a bit of fighting. This demon is called in by their witch doctor, Warlock, and he's here on the cover attacking Conan, which happens in a moment because as soon as uh, this demon appears, Zula and Sonia are sacrificed to him in that the surrounding guys are told to murder them, blah, blah, blah. The demon gets into the fight too. <clears throat> This is indulgent. The story moves along, but not because it has to, not because it just, it feels like an avalanche rolling downhill. And as much as, as fun as an avalanche is to watch, it only happens in as much as there's, you know, trees to be crushed or a hill to be rolled down. So Conan shows up. And here we get the first of the white face, I'm sure. Here he is with his helmet with the white face. And I think there's more of it down below. It's sort of off-putting. It's just sort of a weird thing. Uh, here's more of Sonya. And it's action. They're fighting this monster. They're fighting the warlock. Conan uh, makes the claim that he's backing them up. Here's more of this weird white highlighting on his face. And it's sword, and now it's the like historical fiction, now it's more sorcery in that there's this demon called in. I do like generally in Conan that the demons make an appearance at the end, that they're not, well, last one, Varney was a main character. And that does happen a lot too. But in Savage Sword, at least, it's much more historical fiction as opposed to the comic book. The color... Conan the Barbarian always had a more cartoony flavor to it. Um, especially the way the ancillary characters were presented. It was a much more Spider-Man and Friends. Where Savage Sword was much more, much more, I keep saying that. It was more historical fiction. Um, here we get, that's not, you know, I suppose I, we have to do them back to back. And I guess we will. I have a box of those somewhere. And they're not expensive. We could get those too. But here's Sonia. Um, this kid betrays her. 
And this time she does throw her sword and kill him. And you see the sword go through him right here. And he's like, I thought you wouldn't kill me. Sort of reminiscent of how uh, some urban savages have been behaving in our culture. Thought they wouldn't get shot and they could get away with anything. And now people are shooting them. People are beating them. People are fighting back. So, like I said, this is an indulgent comic. Here we have Conan being the general again, taking charge. He's not really the main character in this issue. It's really kind of the petulant Sonya who moves the plot forward. Like I said yesterday, Conan's not always the main character in his book, but in that he is the deus ex machina character. Even when he, you know, Lucy acts out of place, Conan is capable of rescuing her from her own mistakes. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, she's really unhappy in that she had to kill this kid. She's really unhappy in that the Koharians could not be reasoned with. And that is uh, the white man's burden in that savage populations cannot be reasoned with generally. They're going to have to be dealt with. They're going to have to be punished for their misbehavior. And they're going to have to be in some way managed going forward. Or we're going to see a new Atlantis. I was on the phone for a couple hours with someone earlier today, a friend who's struggling as much as I am. And I put forth, uh, the subject of religion came up, and not just Christian religion, but other people's religion and how much respect it deserves. And I brought up the cargo cults of the South Pacific and what happened post-World War II in the 60s and 70s where they were making wicker planes and setting them out on runways, dirt runways, and worshipping them. And I'm of the opinion that mankind has seen past civilizations They've, we've seen this level of accomplishment, whether it was called Atlantis, Lemuria, Mu, or all the other names for the previous civilizations, or all of them, doesn't really matter. What seems obvious is that some white culture kept their technology and then tried to re-educate the blacks and Arabs who didn't some couple hundred years after a global collapse. And I think we will likely see that again before we get off world. I don't think we will make it to Mars or to a space station. Or if we do make it to a space station, that space station is what will survive when the rest of this goes down in either a catastrophe or man-made, you know, war. <clears throat> we'll see one, one way or the other. Lord of the Misfits, the Fiend Club, we're going to have some fun between here and there. Must spell. Muspelheim, you know, the, the fiery Muspelheim. Clearly he's the lord of the, of the Aryan war people. Ares, fire god, war god. So, yeah, uh, it's getting late. I got some stuff to do. See you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.